experiment time. Today I'm going to see what you can use as alternative liquids in your sourdough bread. I'm comparing beer, milk and whey to regular water-based sourdough bread. What difference will it make? Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. Today I'm going to be making four different sourdough breads. One with regular tap water as I do in most of my non-enriched sourdough breads. One with beer. I'll be using a classic Danish beer, a Pilsner, kind of pale lager, which is the most common type of beer here. One with milk. And the last one will be with whey, which is the liquid that's left over when making cheese. We'll see if it makes any difference in the handling of the dough and what differences there are in the crust and the crumb and the taste of the breads. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. My goal is to show you how to get the most out of every ingredient and I want to teach you how to do that in simple and understandable steps. So join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. The breads that I'm making today are 700 gram loaves shaped into batards. 80% bread flour and 20% dark rye flour. The salt content is 2.3% and the hydration is 80%. The inoculation is 20% which usually makes for an entire bulk fermentation take around 5 hours when used in my proofer after the stretch and folds. If you'd like to support the channel, please buy some merch or you can use the links in the description for tools and ingredients or consider becoming a Patreon, which I'm linking in the card above. Thank you. Those were the words. This is the experiment. The formula for the bread is linked in the card above and in the description. Since I'm not able to buy fluid whey in any of the stores that I frequent, I'm making my own fresh cheese. I start by heating four liters of milk to the boil. Then I cool down the milk and add lemon juice, which separates the curds from the whey. I strain out the whey from the curds using a strainer lined with cheesecloth. Then I refrigerate both until they're needed. The cheese won't be needed for this video, but I'm using that in my cooking. Then I mix all the doughs. First the control. Then the one with beer. I'm using a Danish Pilsner beer. Then the one with milk. And the last one is the one with whey. I leave them all to rest for an hour to get the gluten start developing. Then I start bulk fermentation and I plan to do three sets of stretch and folds. The first set of stretch and folds. Have a look at the one with milk in it. It's so stiff that you'd think the hydration was much lower.
the second set of stretch and folds. The third set of stretch and folds. Then I pull a window pane on each toe. so they go into separate bulking containers. I put them all in my proofer set to 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. After about three hours, the control, the one with the beer and the one with the whey are ready. So I appreciate them. After a little counter rest of 20 minutes, I final shape them. and then I put them all in the fridge. After about three hours and 50 minutes, the bread made with the milk is fermented. So I pre-shape it. Notice how the dough is still noticeably tighter than the other three. and then I final shape it. And off to the fridge it goes. About eight hours later, I preheat my oven and then I start by baking the control. I flip it, I dust it, I score it, then I bake it. And this is how it looks coming out of the oven.
I bake the other three breads the exact same way. Then it's time to cut the bread and see how they look on the inside. This crumb looks great, I love it. This one is a little bit tighter. This loaf is smaller than the others and it also has a pretty tight crumb. Not surprising since it's enriched. This one is kind of lacy, looks cool. Absolutely tighter than the control. And now it's time for the Food Geek Sniff and Taste Test to Yam. Hmm, interesting. Soft. Mmm, good. Okay, so what are the key takeaways from this experiment? Well, adding milk substantially tightens the dough. I've read several places that milk uh, can hinder gluten development because of a protein in milk called serum. This can be avoided by scalding the milk, which means that you just bring it to the boil and then turn it off. The milk should of course be cooled down before you use it so you don't cook the flour prematurely and you don't kill off the yeast in the start. I didn't scald the milk in this experiment as I've never experienced a bread turning flat using milk and obviously it didn't do here either. The other three doughs seemed exactly the same handling wise. When it comes to the crust and the crumb, the one that stood out the most was again the bread made with milk. It softened both the crust and the crumb. Even after the bread was toasted, it wasn't as crispy as the others. Taste wise, the standout was the one made with beer. It had a wonderful hoppy note to it and was slightly bitter. For me, the taste was a perfect combination with the tang from the bread. My girlfriend wasn't convinced. She thought the taste was just a little too dominating. I will usually always do a tasting with her since we both share a common interest in food and taste and we'll discuss all the minute details of the different flavors. The one with whey was surprisingly just like the one with water. I guess the takeaway from that is if you make cheese and have leftover whey, don't throw it away, just make tasty bread. Did I forget any liquids? Let me know in the comments. If I get some interesting ones, I'll make a follow-up video. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Cool.